The Health Service Executive Governance Bill is, as the Minister has said on the introduction of the bill, a building block and a tr transitional bill in its programme to reform the Health Service. The intention apparently is to give the Minister more control of the health over the Health Services. We have seen in the last year what more control of Health Services means in practice for the Minister. We had the debacle of the prioritisation of primary health care centres that led to the resignation of the Junior Minister for Health. New areas in the Minister's own constituencies were added at the last minute to the list without the knowledge of any of his Cabinet colleagues or it seems of the HSE itself. We have also seen the two hospital building projects were announced by Ministers Hogan and Howland before the HSE even knew that they were being prioritised. Is this the type of governance that the Minister is talking about? We will continue to see this type of action from the Minister in the future, I have no doubt about that. But if the examples above are not bad enough, they are not what the Minister intends in this Bill. The Bill will provide for the establishment of a new management structure in the health services, creating a tier of directorships that will operate alongside the existing HSE structure of national directorships while he prepares to abolish the HSE. And all this will be done without any cost to, extra cost to the Exchequer, or so we are told. What will happen in the tr transitional period that the Minister is now establishing? Will there be a freeze in the work of the health services as staff wait to see how the structure will emerge? We saw this before when the HSE was established, and this led to years of inertia when many workers and decision makers at a local level not able to know where decisions should be made or by whom. A change of this magnitude that the Minister is proposing needs to be managed, and an organisation like the health service should have a change management team in place. This should cost money if it is done right. How can an organisation of almost 100,000 people change fundamentally without it costing anything? The building block that this bill is supposed to be part of is a move to the universal health insurance model that the government want to introduce in the image of the Dutch model. In this system, we are told that money will follow the patient. I would remind the Minister of what his predecessor, Mary Harney, said when introducing the 2004 Health Act. It is our generation's chance to put patients first in the design of the management of health services. It is our chance to put in place modern effective management to make the best use of these tremendous resources we are applying to health and to get clear value and clear results for that money. It is our chance to create a system where money can follow patients and where outcomes can be measured. Those words will sound very familiar on the government side of the House. They have been uttered by Minister Riley on many occasions and have they, they have been the mantra of Fingal members for years now. I for one hope that this Minister's plans go the way of the previous Ministers, and in years to come the health services will be reformed to get away from the universal health insurance model. I do not believe that universal health insurance will be a system that will have the faith of the Irish people, and I will not support this Government's effort to introduce it. Unfortunately, the Government are moving on the road to create the system, and this Bill is one part of that programme. The rollout of the hospital groups is also a step, a step with the English system of trust being established. This will drive the move to privatising the health system and handing over control to private health insurance companies. The programme for government sets out that the hospital purchasing arm will merge with the National Treatment Purchase Fund to become a new purchaser of public ca patient care in the period of transition. So it seems that the Department of Health will purchase hospital care for public patients from the hospital groups and this will fit nicely into the universal health insurance companies. For many reasons, this move to universal health insurance will mean that health will become more expensive and access will be restricted for citizens. When universal health insurance was introduced in the Netherlands in 2006, there were 13 health insurance companies operating th there. Today there are five. This is in a country with a population of 18 million people. What will we expect to see in a country of 4.5 million? The state will provide limited care for people who cannot afford it, with, many, with, with maybe two companies operating and profiteering from those who have no choice but to purchase from them. In 2006 in the Netherlands, the average health cover cost around €1,000 per citizen. Today it costs over €3,000 per citizen. How does that equate to progress? In the Netherlands, Universal Health Insurance buys a, pay, buys a basic package of health care that they now have a, and they now have a system where citizens have to buy top-ups to increase their cover. We will see the same thing happening here, but probably quicker. In discussing this bill in the House, many Phil and Yale members have complained that we are spending over 13 billion euros on the health services and that this can't continue. 
There is lots of talk from them about how the health services have to spend the money in better ways. They have to achieve more for less. But that is all it is, is using these fancy phrases. I haven't heard any one of them say, identify how, where this waste is and, how, and give concrete examples of where savings can be made. There has been tension by all accounts between the HSE and the Department of Health on where savings can be made. The department and politicians claim that there are billions to be saved from the elusive word deficiencies and that, the, that other great mantra of getting rid of waste. The HSE are claiming that they cannot do much more and maintain services without the government tackling the things that the HSE have no control over. The response of the minister has to be, has to be introduced a so-called graduate nursing scheme and that's going to be rolled out to other health prof professionals, cutting the wages of frontline health workers in order to save peanuts. So if one good thing would come out of this bill, it would be that the Department of Health would not be able to hide behind the HSE and accept that they are not funding the service adequately. I do believe that the Minister should have more control of the health services, and he should also be accountable for the health, how the health services work or do not work. So should health care providers. The real issue and the problem with the HSE is that there is no accountability. A lack of clear information, and in a country of our size, it depends where you live, what type of treatment you can expect to get. Just look at the, the debacle over catchment areas in Dublin hospitals that I highlighted in this house last year. But I do believe that the health services might have reached or even gone beyond the, the point that levels of cuts that it can sustain. Unless, of course, there is this huge waste and inefficiencies that we hear mentioned but never hear any detail of. I know for my own county, for example, in the case of Letterkenny General Hospital, that the hospital is probably one of the most efficient hospitals in the country. Over 90% of procedures in the hospital are non-elective, and yet the hospital has started each of the previous two years with, budget, with a budget millions of euros short on what it needs to, needs to maintain services. This has been softened slightly this year with an increase in the budget allocation. Now, this year, Letterkenny General Hospital will only start the year a million euros short of what it needs to maintain the services. The fact of the matter is that if we want a health service that is up to the standard of the best in Europe, it has to be paid for. If the health service improves outcomes and becomes more efficient by treating more people and ending waiting lists, then it will actually cost more. And there's no way from, of getting away from that. The government should be driving a debate about what type of health service we want and how much it would cost to provide it. Do we want a health service that is driven by private health insurance providers, charging thousands of euros per citizen, driving the levels of treatment available with the state picking up the costs of those who cannot aff afford the premium? Or do we want a health service that is free at the point of contact, where every citizen can access treatment as required, and a system that is led by medical need, where citizens can access it based on equality and not wealth? The second option may cost more, but I believe that the Irish people would be willing to pay for it if they believed that it was going to be implemented.